I'm not sure anyone thinks that hoovering's actually fun, even when your vacuum cleaner has a smiley face, like our Harry, which along with its chirpy demeanour comes with a whole range of tools, in addition to the main cleaning head. We've got extra brushes for every conceivable surface, and of course everyone's favourite, the crevice tool. We've also got an extra bit of tube so we can use them directly at the end of the flexible hose. What we don't have are many places to keep them when they're not in use, our slots at the back of the machine filling up quickly, leaving at least two of our brushes without a home. And that's where my tool holder comes in, a simple but effective design with space for two of our accessories, created in Tinkercad and 3D printed on my Ender 3 Neo. And in this video, I'll show you how I made it. Pushed onto one of the main hoses, the holder has room for all of our remaining tools, not only keeping them with the machine at all times, so they don't get mislaid, but also keeping them handy, so it's easy to switch brushes mid-vacuum, without having to remember where you put them down last. And after use, you can put the brush back on the holder, where it can stay even when you've finished, and not get lost like our original crevice tool. For my 3D design, I'm going to be using Tinkercad. But before we get down to business, we need a couple of measurements, the diameters of the tubes, and the most accurate way to get these are digital calipers, although you could use a ruler measuring across the end of the tube. We need the outside diameter of the main tube, exactly 32mm, then the insides of the tools themselves, a shade over 31. Then, measurements done, time to create a new 3D design by clicking the button in Tinkercad. Even if you've never used CAD software before, hopefully you'll find it relatively easy to follow, being quite a good introduction to the basics of 3D design. I'm starting with a cylinder, selected from the basic shapes menu on the right, and clicking on the anchor points, I can type in the measurements I want. I could also just drag them until X and Y are both 32. This cylinder is a placeholder for my main tube, or at least a section of it, so I'm just going to make it tall enough to clear the other components of the design. Now I want to duplicate that, and holding down the ALT key, I can make a copy in exactly the same position, dragging up the Z offset. This is going to be my outer ring, which I want to be 4mm thick, so just going round the anchor points, one by one, I could increase the diameter by that amount, ending up with a 40mm cylinder, and doing each opposite in turn. The centre of my cylinder will be in the same place as the other one, just raised slightly off the work plane. Typing in the height we want will shorten it, but it will still be floating. This can be simply rectified by hitting the D key, dropping it to the work plane. Now we want to make our new cylinder a tube, and we can do this by turning the original one from a solid into a hole. Then selecting both of them, we can group them together into a single object, with the hole subtracted from the solid, making a ring that will fit round our vacuum cleaner tube. Now we can crack on with the tool holders, and ungrouping what we've got so far, we can repurpose the elements, duplicating our central cylinder by holding down that ALT key and dragging it to where we want it, first to one side and then to the other, the offset distances being super helpful to get them exactly in the right place, further assisted by the snap to grid, which as you can see from the settings, is set to 1mm. Our two new cylinders are going to be the bases for the tools, so we want those to be solid. The outer diameter is fine, but we want them to be shorter, and once again, typing in the dimensions, for whichever anchor point we've got selected, we'll shrink them to the height we want, in this case 20mm, exactly 100 layers of 3D print at standard settings. At the moment they're a little bit too far away from the centre, so I'm just going to drag each one in by 10mm, that should give us plenty of room for each of the tools, without needing too wide a bridge in between. That's the base of the holder, now we need the core, the bit the tool actually slots onto. And once again I'm making a duplicate, holding down the ALT key, and lifting my new cylinder with the Z axis, so its base is level with the top of the one below. From our original measurements we know that we want the diameter to be 31, and as that's an odd number, we're going to need to reduce it in increments of half a millimetre, first to 31.5 for the bottom anchor, then down to 31 for the top, our centre staying in the same place then the same for the left and the right, hitting return as soon as we've entered the number, which will instantly change the shape. Now our tools will easily fit. But the step down to the base is quite meagre, so now I want to increase the diameter of that, using exactly the same method. I could also simply drag out the corner points to my new size, the anchor snapping to my half millimetre grid, but I would need to recenter the cylinder, something that the incremental method makes unnecessary. That wouldn't be hard in a situation like this, much more difficult if you're dealing with a fraction of a millimetre, like a small bolt hole. 
Now I want my cylinder to be a little bit taller, and I am using the drag method for this, getting the height the same as my middle tube, but I could just as easily type into the box. And that's one side done. But of course, rather than doing it all over again for the other side, we can select both and duplicate using the Alt key again, dragging into place over the original one, assisted by the offset coordinates. Then lifting up our two new ones to reveal the old one below, we can delete that before reselecting and dropping our new ones onto the work plane with the D key. Now we've got all of our bits, the two stacks for holding the tools and the central rig to slip over the tube. We need something to hold them all together. So I'm getting a block from the basic shapes menu centered on the middles of the cylinders and stretched out. So it bridges the gaps between. Then toggling between shapes, I can check it really is in the middle and purely to satisfy my own pedantry, match the width to the distance between the centers of the cylinders. Then using the cube in the top left of the central window, I can spin to the 3D view, where I can lower the height a little bit from the default value, leaving the top of our block a couple of millimeters lower than the base of the tool holders, before selecting everything by dragging the marquee over the whole lot, and grouping all of the objects, solids and the whole, which will knock out the middle of our central cylinder. Then switching to the perspective view, we can spin round our object and for the first time get a sense of what it's going to look like before giving our design a slightly more sensible name, overtyping the one it came with, along with a version number, so we can keep track of any modifications and improvements we make. As it stands, it would work just fine, but it's going to take a lot more filament than really necessary and a lot more time to print, so I want to hollow out the tool holders so they're also tubes rather than solids. So just like before, I want a duplicate cylinder, the diameter of which I can reduce in increments, leaving a wall of 2mm all round when it's subtracted from the outer cylinder. The duplicate, lift and reduce method, leaving the center in the right place. Then we want to make it taller than the other cylinders, turn it into a hole and drop it to the work plane with the D key, so we know the hole goes right to the bottom. Then having done one side, we can duplicate for the other, making sure it's in the right place by using the offset coordinates. Then either using the marquee or command A to select all, we can group everything together, joining all the solid objects and knocking out the holes, creating a much more printer friendly version, which we can now export as an STL, ready for slicing. And it just so happens I've got my Cura software already set up behind my Tinkercad window, so I can drag my downloaded file from the desktop and onto the build plate, hitting the slice button for a print ready file. But before I commit to my six hour print, I just want to check over some of the settings. My design won't need supports, so we can uncheck that box, but it will need to be a bit more rugged than usual. So I'm increasing my wall thickness to two millimeters and the infill density to 50%. Although at the end of the day, there won't be that much infill with the walls of the rings being pretty solid. Slicing again with my new settings gives us a slightly longer print time mostly because of the thicker walls, which we can see from the preview, leave relatively small amounts of infill, mostly on the blocks between the cylinders, which themselves have pretty much solid walls, which should be tough enough for everyday use. Then we can save our G-code to the SD card and hit the eject button, so it can be safely removed and then plugged into our printer. My Ender 3 Neo is very much a budget model, no touch screens here, but it was excellent value and has given several years of solid service, being great for a variety of jobs, both big and small, and it's no nonsense operation, it's ideal for fairly simple jobs like this. My filament is a matte black PLA, again nothing fancy, but it's good at hiding the layers, and after our 8 and a bit print hours, we've got the first iteration of our tool holder, which we can ease off the print bed when it's fully cooled. The print itself has come out pretty well. We've got a few stringy bits, they'll clean up easily. And the transition of the design from CAD to 3D object is looking really good. The big question is, will it fit? As a first prototype, it works well, fitting over the main tube okay, but it is a bit tight, requiring quite a lot of twist to get it up the pipe. So for version two, we'll add a bit of tolerance for that, but not so much so it's loose as we do want it to stay in the same place on the tube. The tool holders have the opposite problem, currently a little bit slack. The brushes stay on okay, but it would be nice if they were a bit more snug. And it's those refinements I want to make for version 2, starting by ungrouping the elements we've got. First of all, I want to make my central cylinder a little bit bigger, just 0.1 of a millimetre all the way round. Once again, typing into the boxes of the opposing anchor points, bringing our total diameter to 32.2, knowing that our centre point hasn't moved. Much easier than dragging the corner points, even if we had set the snap grid to 0.1 of a millimetre. Now when we group everything back together, our sleeve should be very slightly looser, 
more easily sliding up the tube, but staying in place when we've got it to where we want. For the tool holders, I'm going to use a slightly different approach, as I want the fit to be snug rather than tight. I've also noticed that there's a bit of variation between the original tools and any aftermarket replacements I've got, so I'm going to go for a spring clip, which hopefully should cover all bases. The idea here is to add a rectangular hole in the side of the skirt, 10mm wide, 20 tall, and 20mm above the work plane, level with the top of the base, then a 10mm section of the cylinder above, just like before. Then I want to get a sphere from the basic shapes and line it up with my slot, pulling in the anchor points for the sides so they're level with the edges. Then the same for the front and the back, so we've got a little bit protruding outside the ring. This will push against the inside of the tube of the tool, making the fit that little bit tighter. In the plan view, all we know is our object is hovering somewhere in space. So now we want to drop it to the work plane and then lift it into position so it's level with the slot. But even then it is still floating, so we want to add a post, not just to support it, but also to act as a spring, so when our tool is pushed onto the holder, it'll bend back slightly, keeping the tension against the inside of the tool. As the hole for our inner cylinder is in the way, we can't actually see the object, but we do get an outline, so we can change the size and position, either by typing in the values, or dragging the anchor points, both for the height above the work plane, and the dimensions of the block. Then selecting both cylinder and slot, we can group them together, revealing the parts of our spring clip, something I perhaps could have done earlier. Now we can actually see what we're doing. It's much easier to adjust the parts of the clip, either dragging the anchors or typing in the measurements, leaving a clear area around the top so clip is separate from the cylinder on three of the four sides, allowing it to flex. Now that's all well and good in theory, but we'll only know how well it works by printing it out. And rather than doing the whole thing, I just want to group the elements of one of the tool holders, which will take much less time to test. As you can see, the central cylindrical hole has removed the core of all of our selected items, including the back of the clip, but has left the block between the cylinders. And with the temporary name change, it's my selected group that we want to export, so only that part will print. But first, it's back into the slicer, which is where we left it, with our first attempt on the build plate. So we want to clear that away, before dragging on our new test file, and slicing, using the same settings as before. As you can see, our test will only take a couple of hours to print, a whole lot less than the full design, which is just as well, because we'll almost certainly need to make some adjustments. Then once again, saving our G-code to the SD card, we can get it onto the printer and try it out. This time from the side you can see the clip with the curved surface protruding from the slot, after which the printer finishes off the cylinder just as before. And even while still on the print bed, we can give our clip a little test. When everything's cooled down, we can take a closer look, and straight away we can see that our clip is far too feeble, and our tools are as loose as ever. But the idea behind the mechanism is sound, and fast forwarding to my second prototype, I've made the whole thing chunkier, although the tools are still a little loose. So after a little bit of fiddling, here's my final design. I've already got my cylinders combined as a single unit, with my clips grouped separately. My blue spheroid is now slightly further out, with the new elliptical cylinder behind, for a tighter fit inside the tool. Then I've got a rectangular hole behind that, just to flatten off the back. Then there's my red post, now quite a bit thicker. Still flexible enough to give a bit of spring, but strong enough not to snap. And it's those four elements that are grouped together for each of my tool clips simply duplicated for the other side. For slicing, I've also made a couple of changes to the settings, with a slightly thinner wall and 100% infill for extra strength. Then it's on to the printer for what will hopefully be the final output, the STL files for which I've made available on my website. So if you want to skip the design in Tinkercad, you can just download that and print one for yourself. But if you do, please subscribe and don't forget to like the video. After all that experimenting, my final design is pretty much bang on. The sleeve now fits the tube perfectly, easy to slide on but staying where we want it, and our tools fit snugly too, the spring clips providing just the right amount of grip, giving all of our tools a home, on hand for when we need them.